YouTube pilot friends and welcome to the second part of this video on planning a flight or at least one leg of a flight. So last time we marked up a chart, we put a track leg, two 10 degree drift lines and a mysterious blue box and a checkpoint onto the chart. The observant view have noticed that I've put two figures into this mysterious blue box and I'll explain those to you later. But, it's now time to start doing some calculations. So, the first thing I have here is a flight log. And I think I'll just zoom in a little bit, if I can. Here's, here's hoping. That's better. And you can see that um, I've started this already. So, I'm going from EGNX, East Midlands, EGCL, Fenland. Now I've had a look at the chart and I've determined that the highest obstacle within 10 miles of track en route is 800 feet. Now because it's a visual flight I'm adding another 500 feet on top of that to give us a minimum safe altitude. If this was an IFR flight it would be a thousand but visual will take five. Our planned altitude is uh, 3,000, not 300 feet, 3,000 feet. And our true airspeed, for simplicity's sake today, is 90 knots. The true track is the one that we measured on the chart of 097 degrees. I'll just show you. There you go, 097. And that's the one we use our square protractor to get. And we've got a fictitious wind today um, of 230 at 30. So that's a wind coming from 230 degrees true. Now all forecast winds are true winds. The ones that you'll get on the ATIS when you're at the airport, they're magnetic. These are true winds. And it's a 30 knot wind. So there's some crosswind component there. There's also a tailwind component. It's time to introduce you to um, everyone's least favourite bit of kit, and it's the circular slide rule, the uh, CRP5. Not always called a CRP, I have to say. Those of you that are familiar with this piece of kit know that it's got two sides to it, and a wind, one is a wind side, one's a calculation side and a removable plastic wind slide. There are other models. Um, I know that in the UK Transair make one, uh, the TPS5 I think it's called, and there are the metal ones. So they all do the same job. So we're going to use the wind markdown method. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look 230 and set that at the top of this index. And some of you will be wondering why I'm using this and not using a wonderful application on the iPhone or the iPad. Well, the reason is this doesn't go flat. It's as simple as. Okay, so 230 is set there and we'll set the dot on the zero line here. You can actually use it anywhere on the scale, but it's easiest when you're learning if you put it there. And we said the wind was at 30 degrees. So, using a pencil, I'm going to put a cross on the 30. It's not always very easy to see those crosses, but hopefully you can do. Now the next stage is to set our TAS of 90 knots underneath the dot, and our track of 097 on the scale. So 097 set, TAS of 90, and we can see that the cross has now moved to this location. Now following these drift lines down, it's between 11 and 12, call it 12 degrees of drift, and we have to wiggle what we need to do now is take 097 
and place that 12 degrees to the left. So I'll do that now. There we go. 0, 9, 7 and 12 degrees to the left. Now let's move that across to 14 degrees. Murphy's Law. It's OK. What we'll do is now move that 0, 9, 7 to 14 degrees. And we'll reevaluate. Well, that's pretty much on 14, probably 14 and a half. But it's, it's as they say, good enough for government work. That's giving us a true heading now of 1, 1, 1. So we'll write 1, 1, 1 there. We can also read off 108. Now that's our ground speed. So using the wind side of the calculator, we've got a heading and a ground speed. The next thing is to remember the acronym CDM VTT, or as my old instructor taught me, Cadbury's Dairy Milk, very tasty treat. C D M V T T. We're actually going to reverse it for doing this. Now we've got our true track, which goes to true heading. We now need to add variation. And the variation in this part of the world we can take from our chart. And if we look, we know that there's a, a line that passes through there with a variation of one and a half degrees, one and a half degrees west. So our variation, one and a half degrees west. We'll call that two degrees. And you may remember the old phrase, east is least, west is best. So we're going to add on two degrees. Give us a heading of one, one, three. gives us our magnetic heading. Now in the air aircraft, we then have a look at the deviation card. That funny card that's on the compass that nobody knows what it's for. Well, we can have a look and we can apply the deviation that's noticed on that card. It may be a couple of degrees and that would finally give us our compass heading. But at this stage of the planning, because we don't know which aircraft we're in, perhaps. We haven't got to the airfield, there could be a change, any number of factors. We stop the calculations and get 113 as that magnetic heading. Going back to the chart, we'll put 113 into this top box. And we now just need to know how long it's going to take us to fly, first of all, to Melton Mowbray, and then ultimately, all the way to our destination. So we go back to our circular slide rule. On the other side, we calculated 108 knots as a ground speed. So we'll take the time pointer and put it underneath 108. Our first distance was 16 miles. On the circular slide rule, time is indicated on the inner scale, distance on the outer scale. So we read 16 and we can see that, that gives an indication of 9 minutes. So. Going back to this, and I'm going to tidy this up later, I'm just going to put t equals 9. 
next to the checkpoint. Now the next piece of information is it's a 48 mile leg. So let's have a look on here. Where's 48? 5, 6, 7, there's 48. And it's just below 27 minutes. So the total time for that leg is 27. Again, I'm going to transfer T equals 27. Isn't it a great thing being able to write or more to arrays? So 27 minutes. Now let's get rid of the, um, the bits we don't need. We don't want that particularly. We might keep the track on there perhaps. That could be um, perhaps a useful thing. It's a good idea really to put that 27 and we'll use the hour format here in this box. So now the box gives us information, it gives us our heading, our time, our altitude and our MSA and it points in the direction in which we want to fly. We now know at 9 minutes we're looking for a checkpoint at Melton Mowbray, 27 minutes we should arrive at Fenland. And all of that's on our plog, neatly noted down there. All we'd have to do is not write down our takeoff time. So let's assume we take off at 13 minutes past 1 GMT. Once we're established on route, we then do a mental calculation and we come up with an ETA of 4-0. We just do the minutes. That's all we need to do. Now that ETA may be revised. We may get to Melton Mowbray and decide that actually our ETA is wrong. As it happens, Melton Mowbray is a third of the way along the route. So let's suppose we got there at 10 minutes and not 9 minutes. Well, we would know then that it was likely that our time would actually be not 27, but 30. And so that we would arrive not at 40, but at 43. So we can make a sensible correction at that first checkpoint. Well, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.